Hey everybody, it's your man James, back again with some more comic book reviews for you. Today we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. Um, this is a comic not put out by a major publisher like Dynamite, Marvel, DC, or any of those guys. This is a uh, independent work done through Indiegogo. This is The Case of the Littlest Umbrella by my good friend Tug, that umbrella guy, Peter Gilmore, and Kyung Lee. Uh, this was Tug's very first efforts into the comic realm, his very first work, so uh, should be interesting to find out about it. He has described this as an all-ages Lovecraftian adventure, um, and while I see why he's going for that, I'm not necessarily sure I totally agree with that description, but we'll get into that as we uh, go through the story here. And this book is actually three stories, and here's our first one by Kyung Lee and Tug himself. And this is the story with Detective Umbrella right here. And uh, what happens is, is he basically is like he works for like a BPRD type of uh, uh, organization. You can see here, here's his boss who's uh, not exactly human. And he solves uh, sort of like supernatural mysteries. You know, he's like a, a specialist for that. And, uh, you know, the story opens with a... Very typical scene, you know, he's doing some work around the office, and then he has to go out on a case. Someone needs to finish cleaning up in here. Now quit yakking and step to it, bucko. You don't have to tell me twice. Have fun moving around those heavy boxes. So, Tug is on the case, and so he has to go to this hotel where there's some strange happenings going on, and uh, he enters the place, and you can see here, you know, there's all kinds of mysteriousness and then enter the littlest umbrella you know just uh, basically doing what kids do you know and it's you can very much see the relationship that they have is very close you know just like all fathers and daughters yeah you got me good little you got me good kiddo now listen I need you to go back to our hotel and wait for me I'm working right now and this ain't any kind of place for children. But what about ice cream? After I finish work, I promise. Don't worry. It won't take long. Heck, I'll tell you what. I bet by the time you get back to the to the room, I'll have I'll be done faster than you can say. Holy shit. Holy. No, no. That's not what I meant. Just uh forget what forget what I said and don't ever repeat that mommy would have a conniption if she heard you say that what's that something very painful for daddy see I love that see, it's perfect this this whole scene is a perfect encapsulation of the relationship between him and the daughter and I love that that's that's classic dad humor right there you know and you married man you know how that is you know how true this is so that's some good stuff and as the uh, story progresses tug Starts to find some strange stuff while the littlest umbrella does some investigating of her own and, you know, finds a little a little friend. And as things progress, you know, Tug is trying to find out what's going on and what the deal is. You know, here he is here in a, a room with lots of scribblings on the wall, very, you know, demonic and dark but you know and then hey there you know right there there it is the the catchphrase du jour right there folks that's tug's famous line and so while tug is dealing with the mystery and other craziness it's the littlest umbrella who finds the main the main clue that we all need and uh it turns out that And what Tug has to do is is he's trying to find out what's opening these portals, allowing these creatures in. And as it turns out, it's the book the little umbrella has found. Someone was writing in it and caused this to happen. And you see, here it is right here. You know, stop, kiddo. You got to stop writing. But I'm not finished yet. The monsters you're writing about are coming to life. Don't be silly. That's impossible, Daddy. Get rid of the monsters now and 
We can go get ice cream. You can have a triple scoop waffle cone. Okay. <laughs> Just perfect. He, he captures perfectly a child's, you know, sense of logic and reason. That's, that's, that was the most enjoyable thing about the story here was, was that interaction. And so, you know, things, uh, they head back to the office and, uh, you know, things end. You know, she, uh, she ends the story and all the stuff melts away. And of course, you know, Tug, you know, oh, daddy, you forgot to bring in your umbrella. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a fun little story there. Um, I would have liked a little more detail, maybe in in the the cause of all the uh, all the craziness, you know, other than just writing in the book that was causing it, because we don't really know why that came about or who caused it. You know, the mystery isn't solved, you know, completely. You know, is that maybe more for another story, perhaps? But I just it just felt a little unfulfilling with that that fact that he. Uh, that he didn't sort of like close the case completely. Um, but again, the interaction between, you know, Tug and the Lilith Umbrella, that's, that was great stuff. You know, great father-daughter stuff. And like I said, there's sort of some action in there and there's some humor in there. So, you know, it all, it all worked out very, fairly well. Then we get to this here, The Case of the Lilith Dino by Peter Gilmore. And it's basically just, it's more like a child's book story. You know, it's all done with, uh, Done in rhyme. Goodness, it's one of the Renfa mice. Come back, Livy. Those mice aren't nice. But Livy chases where she should not roam until she's lost and far from home. You know, it's a little little rhyming rhyming scheme for the story. It's it's again very simplistic, both in the art style and in the the uh, writing style. But again, this is meant for probably a younger crowd than. Uh, than your 40-something reviewer here, so, and it's a short story, so it didn't go on too long. And then there's a second story here by Peter Gilmore, Escape from Dino Island. I'm sensing a theme here, and this one is, you know, this one, this one was probably the least, the one I like the least. You, know, you can see that Gilmore alters his style, whereas with this, you know, it's very much a child story, so he kind of plays it with a more cartoonier, childlike style. Here it's a lot more detailed, a lot more serious of a story, so he kind of tailors his style to that. I like that he did that, but the story itself, you know, you feel like you're coming in in the middle. You got the little umbrella who's been captured by, by this dinosaur controlling uh, weirdo here, and, you know, Tug has to come in and save her, while, you know, then, then the volcano goes off, and they gotta try to escape from the island, I guess, uh, I guess there's Mrs. Umbrella right here. There's Mommy. Better hope he doesn't say uh, you know what because she'll get probably ticked off. You know, and they they roam through uh, dinosaur land trying to escape all the dinosaurs until they find one that's willing to help them. And they get back to their plane. They take off. And the story is continuing. But, you know, it felt kind of felt kind of rushed. Felt kind of in the middle, you know, like you walked into a story halfway through, and uh, not very fulfilling. This this one, I, I would have felt better if they would have extended the first story, and uh, or even extended the little rhyming story rather than than do the third story because that one seems kind of a waste because you don't really get, it's, it's it's not very satisfactory in any any real meaningful way as the other two are. Um, overall, though, the book is not bad. Um, it's, it's, like I said, it's definitely not going to be, you know, if you're looking for deep, serious, you know, uh, action and, and drama and like, you know, adult themes, and you're not going to find any of that here. This is, this is definitely a book that obviously is being targeted at kids, but it's still a, uh, still a, a fairly decent effort. Like I said, I think kids will enjoy this book a lot, you know, especially, you know, younger kids, like, you know, say five to eight. You know, they would really probably dig on this and, you know, the monsters in it, you know, while you and I would look at them and we're kind of maybe laughing a little bit, but uh, they'd probably find it kind of scary. So if you got, if you got kids who like spooky stuff, you should check this out. Um, overall, I'd give this about a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it, it was entertaining in most of the spots. And uh, I like the art. Kyung Lee's art was definitely the, uh, 
the standout to me in all of this. His his art style was the best, I think best suited for all of this uh, this work. Um, Peter Gilmore, I liked I like Gilmore's uh, stuff here with the list. I think I think he could be a great children's book author. You know, with uh, with his with this cartoonier style, and you know, I could really see him doing well with a children's book. You know, uh, like I said, when he when he went to try to do a more uh, a more serious comic, it, it didn't quite turn out quite as well as uh, as this one did. So I would say definitely, you know, Peter Gilmore, if he wanted to do more, if he wanted to go into like children's works, I think he'd be great for that. Um, part of the reason I'm reviewing this is because Tug has his second book coming out. He's got currently campaigning it on Indiegogo. I'll give you guys a link down there in the description. So if you want to go and support his uh, his newest effort from uh, what you see in here, uh, I would definitely say go and do that because I, I definitely have. So I, I, I'm going to be supporting this. I want to see more. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully more like the first story and less like the third story. But this, like I said, overall, this wasn't bad stuff. This was really, a really, uh, like I said, a fun, light entertainment you know, so it was definitely something that I think kids can get into. Definitely a great entry point for kids, especially if they like horror and scary things and spooky stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, so like I said, 6.5 out of 10. Uh, I'll give it a, a mild recommend. If you, if you have children, definitely get this. I, like I said, especially if you know they like spooky things, this is definitely, you should get this for them because I think they'll really check, enjoy checking that out. Um, and uh, yeah, that about uh, covers it. So uh, uh, thanks for tuning in to this uh, review here. If you liked what you heard, make sure to give me a like and comment below. If you didn't like it, uh, hit me up with a comment as well. I'm always wanting to hear what you guys got to say. And uh, make sure to smash that subscribe button so when I do new reviews and other things on the channel here, you get notifications. And until next time, take care.